everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, and joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel, who's here to give us the top stacks for Super Wild Card Weekend. What's going on, Jim? I am good, Greg. I'm excited for this weekend. We get three separate three-game slates, uh, a lot of decent plays across the board for them, too. Trying to hunt for some value to jam in all these good running backs, so I'm pretty pumped for how things play out on Saturday and Sunday. How are you doing? As you said, two Thanksgiving Day slates. What else can you ask for? Let's go with your top stack on the board. And it's the quarterback I expected, but not necessarily a wide receiver. And that's in Buffalo, where you're pairing Josh Allen with the returning John Brown. Stephon Diggs battling an oblique injury. He's going to play, of course, obviously way more expensive than John Brown. Should you just do all three? I mean, sure, it's a three-game slate. Why not? Let's get a little crazy here. But I think that the reason that I want to go with John Brown is because the salary is really good. Stephon Diggs, obviously, the top option. He's the best receiver on the slate, even with the injury, yada, yada, yada. You want Stephon Diggs in there. But also, John Brown's role is really good for the salary he has. He is $5,700, and in the games he's been healthy this year, he's had 20% of the team's overall targets and 24% of the deep targets. He has had at least 70 yards five separate times across seven seven full games, that's really good. And I think the big appeal of John Brown, like you said, is the salary. $5,700. We've got Josh Allen and Jonathan Taylor in the same game. I want to get both those guys onto my roster, but Josh Allen is $9,000. Jonathan Taylor, eighty-eight. dollars We got to find savings somewhere, and I think that John Brown is just the best way to do so. I think that he is the, the, the best wide receiver value on the entire Saturday slate. So if I compare him with his quarterback and Josh Allen, also potentially with Stephon Diggs too, and then get Jonathan Taylor, that's giving me a lot of valuable exposure to far and away the best game on the Saturday slate. So John Brown, to me, I think it's just a standout play, whether you are using Josh Allen or not. And hint, you should use Josh Allen on Saturday. He is easily the best quarterback. I'm okay with putting Stephon Diggs in there too, for sure. But the salary savings on John Brown, just too good to pass up on a slate where I want to get to guys like Josh Allen and Jonathan Taylor. This game should be fun between the Colts and the Bills. Josh Allen, the top quarterback on the slate, uh, pairing him with John Brown, and you're going to force the five days as well. It seems like a no-brainer. Uh, it's a good first game. A lot of storylines involved. The biggest storyline is Josh Allen's legs. Take advantage of that on Saturday afternoon. Speaking of running quarterbacks, and we don't talk about him enough when it comes to Ryan Tannehill. He uses his legs as well. And Tannehill, certainly a viable play on Sunday afternoon against Baltimore. And again, not the wide receiver that I thought you'd pair him with. You're going with Corey Davis instead of A.J. Brown. I know cost is a factor here, uh, but why this pairing uh, with Corey Davis instead of A.J. Brown? Salary is not a factor. It is the factor here because on the Sunday slate, there aren't any low-salaried running backs I want to use. Like, it drops off really fast after Nick Chubb on that slate, which does mean that you probably want to use a wide receiver in your flex rather than a running back. That does help alleviate some salary concerns. But if I want to get in Derrick Henry and Alvin Kamara, potentially J.K. Dobbins, I've got to save salary. And A.J. Brown is $8,400, while Corey Davis is $6,400. A.J. Brown should be higher salaried. But the gap we're getting here between Brown and Davis is not in line with the gap between their workloads. Because in the games they've had with Brown, Davis, and Johnny Smith fully healthy this year, Corey Davis has 24% of the overall targets and 42% of the deep targets. He also had 100 yards in their first game against this Ravens team. So I need to say salary. And I can't do that with A.J. Brown. That does not mean that A.J. Brown is not a good play. A.J. Brown is a tremendous play. But within the context of this slate... I've got to save everywhere I can if I want to get to Derrick Henry and Alvin Kamara. And Corey Davis helps move the needle in a pretty big way there. This 6,000 range of wide receiver on Sunday is loaded, but Corey Davis is the number two guy in that range behind Michael Thomas. So it's a good range, but Corey Davis, as they stand out within it, gets me exposure to the best game on the slate by a wide margin. So I am going to go with Corey Davis here. Love A.J. Brown for sure. Just hard to get him in there with Derrick Henry and Alvin Kamara also on the slate and a lack of viable value at running back. It's not easy to fit in there all the right Titans, and you'll try your best on Sunday. But here, with Ryan Tannehill going with Corey Davis, it, it does allow you some options. And that's always what you're looking for on these slates, options. That's what Tannehill and Corey Davis will provide. The Titans in a fun one, a pick em game here against the Baltimore Ravens. The last stack here, not exactly what I expected. No Lamar Jackson, Marquise Brown here. Instead, you're going with Ben Roethlisberger and Chase Claypool. Another opportunity for me to ask you, how did you choose the Steelers wide receiver? I imagine it was out of a hat. 
partially out of a hat, uh, but also I may have weighted the hat towards Chase Claypool because I think he's pretty fun. And I think there are a couple of reasons to be into Chase Claypool here. The first one is that it's a good matchup with the Browns. Obviously, the defense is not one to be feared. Just put Rodney Harrison on the COVID list as well. They don't have their head coach. There are reasons to like this Steelers team, which should throw a ton because that's what they do in a good matchup. So we do want to go on the Steelers. That's why Ben Roethlisberger is here. Good volume should be good efficiency in a game I'd expect the Steelers to win. As far as Chase Claypool goes, it's kind of a buy low situation because Mike Tomlin said explicitly the reason they had cut down Chase Claypool's snaps during the regular season was that he would avoid a rookie wall. The reason you want to avoid a rookie wall is that you can utilize him in the playoffs. Well, we're in the playoffs right now, and if you're ever going to take the reins off this guy, it's going to be on Sunday and let Chase Claypool thrive. Even with the reduced snap rate, we've still seen Chase Claypool get 32% of the Steelers' targets ever since James Washington's snap rate went up. That was when Claypool's snap rate was down. Still a 32% share of the deep targets. He's had multiple deep targets basically every game so far this year, and we know he has a role in the red zone. So we're taking a bit of a leap of faith here and saying that Chase Claypool's snap rate will go up with everything on the line. But even if we don't get that, he's still in play at $6,100. If we assume that Chase Claypool's role go, goes back to what it was earlier this year before Tomlin cut down the snap rate, he could be bananas. He would be crazy undervalued. So again, as I mentioned with Corey Davis, the 6,000 range of wide receiver is loaded. Michael Thomas is there. Corey Davis is there. But I think that Chase Claypool is part of that discussion as well. There is a great path to a ceiling. He has an okay floor, just if he keep, maintains that same role. And he's got a low salary at $6,100. If you have the salary to get to Deontay Johnson, he is the better option in this Steelers passing game. You definitely prefer Deontay Johnson over Chase Claypool straight up. But Claypool has a great ceiling, a low salary, and the potential for his role to expand. I'll take that for sure when his salary is at $6,100. Finally, we may see an opportunity for Chase Claypool to get a higher snap rate, ideally, and certainly those touchdowns that were there earlier in the year and in Week 17. Ben Roethlisberger got the week off. He's healthy. He's ready to go. The Steelers, everybody kind of forgets that they were 11-0, and were the best team in football for a while. Maybe they're not that same team. The Browns don't win in, Cleveland, in Pittsburgh, and they don't win without their head coach. Chase Claypool is going to be part of the reason why. Ben Roethlisberger to Chase Claypool, a fine stack this weekend. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up. Jim, I am excited and ready to go. Yeah, me too, Greg. It's going to be a really fun uh, weekend. I'm excited to kick back, do absolutely nothing, and watch some football. It should be a fun run. I'm looking forward to talking about uh, talking to you next week about the divisional round, too. Yeah, it's going to be a very, very fun uh, NFL playoffs. It always is. Next week, we get the return of Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes. But who are they going to face? We'll find out over the next two days. For Jim Sonis, I'm Greg Sussman. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy Super Wildcard Weekend, and we'll see you back here next week for another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up.